Hello, Chris Mystery Cleaning. Cleaning was the foul coast, and today's video I want to talk about anxiety amongst new business owners. Um, so I've been cleaning windows within my business uh, for five years now, and so for some people that might make me a seasoned veteran or a pro, and for others it might make me a noob or a uh, or a pup. Make of it what you will. I'm completely okay with either. <laughs> um, the idea behind these videos uh, is to um, help. Uh, young guys and girls starting out becoming self-employed i don't think there's ever been a more prevalent sort of uh time job security being what it is i think we're going to see a lot more people becoming self-employed but anyway to the matter at hand so anxiety so how does it manifest itself for me the anxiety used to be when engaging with a customer with customers in general and so um, I would, for example, go around uh, giving prices and quoting, and I would deliberately um, quote the price down to sort of, um, you know, um, not offend anybody, not cause a row, uh, and win that win that contract, win that job, and then, you know, um, and move on. Now, I'll do another video in the future for those of us that, so for those of you guys that have uh, perhaps. Uh, underpriced a job and then um, come to regret it down the line how you can sort of recoup and recover from that I'll do I'll do that I think it was the next video but um, the interaction itself I used to dread um, a I used to dread, dread you know get my mother's teeth in I used to dread rejection which was one I also used to worry about what the customer would think of me as a person or oh, I'm really new at this and and they can see I'm new at this and Oh, it's all going to go terribly wrong. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in the sense that if you think you are, if you continue to push that narrative on yourself, that you are not worthy, you are you are new at this, you don't really know what you're doing, uh, why the hell did I do this, and blah, blah, and all this sort of stuff, all these anxieties that we all go through, um, and I promise you, we all do go through them. There's no, there's, you know, there's... there's You've got to be some kind of special to sort of not feel any form of anxiety when becoming self-employed. It's just automatically what you sign up for. Um, now, over time, it will get better. It will go away. And I think for me, um, I'm very, I'm not very anxious anymore. Um, and very occasionally, I do get a bit of a, I feel that, that in the pit of my stomach sometimes with certain things. Um, and there are certain strategies for coping with that, mine being ultimately poker face suppress that anxiety and come across as professional as you can to the customer and i think part of this is um when you're dealing with a customer if you're coming across as that oliver twist please sir can i have some more yeah um really what you're putting across is is that you are desperate what you're putting across is that you are nervous potentially you don't know what you're doing or you're very new to this and some people might exploit that. Other people might just not really want to deal with you because if you if you don't really know what you're doing, then it's like, well, yeah, I'm all right, mate. Don't worry about it. See you later. And you get a fair bit of that. Um, and I think a lot of the anxiety will be caused by not necessarily coming across. I mean, it's maybe sometimes for some people coming across as not really knowing what you're doing. There are other anxieties for things like trying to make bank, trying to make sure that you're making enough money. Uh, me personally, I was absolutely terrified, absolutely terrified, I promise you, um, about trying to feed my kids. I was absolutely terrified. I felt like the worst father in the world. Um, there was mounting debt. There was worry. There was financial issues left, right and Chelsea. You name it. You know what I mean? I was the worst dad in the world and that was that, you know, and... Um, you know, when you're talking about how poor, I'm not waving the lantern for me, but just to give you an, an idea of what sort of, you know, we've been up against, me me and my wife uh, and my family in general, we've been up against the room in days where me and my wife uh, went without food so that we could feed our kids. That's just how bad it got. And that didn't help the anxiety um, at all. Uh, if anything, it, um, it played into it and helped fuel this big ball of, worry that used to sit in the pit of your stomach and every now and then it would just rise up and it would just consume you so coping strategy for me 
what I found work, used to work was that ultimately I I wanted to, I, I spoke to other people about it and other business owners um, through networking groups and stuff like that, you know, through business networks and stuff like that. Getting used to talking in groups of people, standing up and sort of talking about your business. And, you know, in my view, it, it doesn't really matter what your business is. It could be, it could be bin, bin cleaning, it could be man in the van, it could be window cleaning, it could be an electrician, it could be a stonemason, it could be any number of trades, whatever it is. For whatever reason, you arrived at that point where you wanted to start a business or you fell into that trade for a reason. Now, in my humble opinion, running a business is something to be proud of. You know, and it doesn't matter, like I say, it doesn't matter if you're um, if you're a cleaner, it doesn't matter if you do windows, it doesn't matter if you, whatever. It's your business, it's something to be proud of. You know what I mean? So, and I think, and that was put across to me by a number of friends that, that own businesses uh, for far longer than I've ever owned um, a business. And um, I spoke to, you know, a number of friends, one in particular has been in business for over 30 years, his name's Mark. And, it, you know, hard-nosed businessman but at the same time was not afraid to sort of um you know put his arm around me to some degree and sort of help me um with my anxieties and stuff like that and now i just um i follow a lot of his advice which is hopefully i can pass on to you guys um that if you feel that you need it um then yeah knock yourself out so coping strategies so again if you're feeling like um, your anxiety is stemming, like mine, from not really knowing what you're talking about and not being able to make bank and all that sort of stuff. You have to sort of sit down, sit down and have a conversation with yourself and say, look, you wanted this business. It will work, okay? You will find customers. You just, you know, and just go through, you know, go through the process. I won't say go through the motions. You don't go through the motions. You go through the process. The process for me is, is ultimately is, is being proud of what you've achieved. You know, most people won't start a business um, ever. You know what I mean? Um, they'll be too, the, most people will be paralyzed with fear at the thought of starting a business um, and won't get past, you know, they won't pass go. They will not collect 200, you know, in the grand scheme. They'll just not bother because the anxiety will just be too much for them to start with. They get anxiety just thinking about it. You know, if you have started your own business, you are already way ahead of these people, uh, way ahead of these people, because you've actually put your money where your mouth is. You've stood stood firm and gone, no, I want to do this. I must do this. And that's brilliant. So take take the win. Yeah, take advantage of the win. So when When things go well, give yourself good praise. When things don't go so well, then you go, oh, well, I'll just put it to put it down to bad experience, we move on. Uh, I used to get really eaten up when a customer used to leave uh, because I, I, all I saw was is that um, that's money coming away from uh, from the business. It's not, it's money out of my pocket and we're poorer, you know, and, you know, but the thing is, is, is not getting eaten up by it because there'll be plenty of other customers. There's plenty of other opportunities out there. Um, you just got to make yourself visible and just go through the process and just, you know, gather that customer and treat them well and then they'll refer you on to, and, and it's fine and, it, and these things do happen um when you're talking about giving a price for, uh, so another one for me was giving a price to customers i would feel sometimes that you know um you know that the customer would, would really would, would would i would almost be found out you know I'm, oh i i've got to he's going to get found out you know that sort of thing you know that you really didn't know what you were talking about uh, even though you do, but the customer will think that and, and that worries you because, oh, you know, all this sort of stuff. So the way I, I, I feel is, is is continue to pu push through and deal with customers and speak to people as a matter of routine. And as you speak to people, you'll get used to speaking to people. And, um, you know, you, you sh you're, very no you're very knowledgeable about your business. You just don't know it yet. You know, you can you know explain your pricing and all that sort of stuff, if you feel the need to. So there's two ways, in my view, there's two, imagine for a minute, there are two people trying to give um, give quotes on a job, and you've got one guy who turns up, and he's very sort of, oh, yes, Mrs. Smith, X, Y, and Z, uh, yeah, you want um, a deep clean, which is gutters, faces, soffit boards, barge boards, 
windows, frames, and doors inside and out. That would be three hundred pound. Okay, that's that's how much we charge for two guys to do that. You know, um, is three hundred pound. Okay, now irrespective of how that customer reacts, that's just the price. That's just how it is. If they, the worst they can do is say no, no, it's too expensive, mate. Um, and then you've got another guy who goes cap in hand. You know. Who's like, oh well, uh, it, it, you know, and, and you can physically see that you're nervous, and straight away he's like, yeah, I'm gonna talk him down. I'm gonna say what well, I'll give you two hundred for it. You know, whereas people won't try. People won't. People tend not to uh, try and negotiate with me now. Uh, I will give a price, and then ninety nine times out of a hundred, they'll go yes or no, or let me think about it. They don't bother trying to adjust the price, and that's when you know you, you know it's working. Okay, it's when people stop, um, people stop trying to push your prices down, and they sort of accept. Well, well, actually, that's just how much it is. You know, um, if you come across as nervous, you will be that guy that gets you, know, and you'll get it a lot. Where they'll go, well, I'll tell you what, mate, I'll give you one fifty for it. It's about one fifty cash, you know, and you'll be like, uh, uh, well. Uh, you know, do I take the money? Do I not? You know what I mean. And the thing is, if you've got the and if you have the confidence to turn around to that person and say, "Well, no, I appreciate, I appreciate that," it says, yeah, "It's not going to work. I'm sorry. You know, I have costs that need that need taken care of um, before I take any money for myself as profit. So, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, there's there's my card. If you change your mind, just let me know. And that's that. It's done. It's as short and sweet as that kind of thing. That's that's how I felt. That's how I've learned to deal with customers. It's very much a case of knowing, standing your ground, knowing your worth, and obviously not um, not caving to pressure. Don't feel pressured is is what it is. I think, and I think the more you talk to people and the more you engage with people, and don't forget, as time goes by, you will get far better at it. Uh, this is not something that comes overnight like that. You know, you will learn. You will learn um, that you know. How, how to do this it's just like anything else at one point in your life you couldn't you couldn't walk you know um my daughter is 11 years old and she still can't ride a bike you know so she just because she's nervous about falling but my youngest she's fearless and she's fallen off her bike many a time it's just different people handle things differently and don't feel bad that you know if you're that guy that or girl that has anxiety over dealing with customers welcome to the club um you know we've 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 all generally speaking we've all we've all experienced anxiety at some level uh over something related to our businesses so this is nothing this is nothing um you to you should be feeling ashamed about this is just part of the process so honestly i promise you it's it's fine um dealing with rejection is a big one as well i used to worry that uh, or the customer is just going to say no and blah, 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 and I get really down about it. And the thing is, it's like, well, okay, fine. You know, now it's, you know, like for example, the other day I was cleaning the windows on an avenue, um, house around the corner from where I live. And uh, we were charging the lady that we, the customer that we have, we were charging her eight quid for the front and side um, of a bungalow with lots of windows on it. You know, so there were more windows on the side than there were on the front. Weird design. Anyway, we was doing that house and a lady came out, um, accosted me and sort of and said, oh, can you come and give us a price for our windows? I was like, certainly, my love, not a problem. Um, I'll get done, just let me get done here and I'll, I'll pop over and I'll give you a price shot. Is that like, okay? I thought, Brilliant, no worries. So she went off, she trotted off into her house, no problem. And and I just sort of, our, our policy now, generally speaking, is when we go to clean people's windows, we charge double for the first clean. There's a number of reasons for that. Uh, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do, I'll talk about that in another video. Excuse me, it's, you know. Talk, I'll talk about that in another video. But we went, I went to this, this house and it was pretty similar to the one I'd just done. Uh, but she wanted all around doing instead of um, front and side. The one I was doing didn't you couldn't you can't access the back, um, you know without going through the house and with this whole coronavirus and all this crap, uh, I've decided it's probably better to stay out of people's homes for now. But um, yeah, anyway, so I went off to give this lady a quote, similar sort of size house, and from the, you know, I said, well, it's twenty four pound for the first clean, my love. That's win. So I explained to her 
it's windows frames sills and doors uh all round and it'll be the first clean will be um 24 pound and she straight away went you know she, you know so if she let me finish my conversation my, my, my sentence it would have been 24 pound for the first clean and then 12 pound every four weeks thereafter on the same day we would text you the night before um and all that sort of t's and c's everything done right but she didn't even let me finish she didn't even let me finish uh, I was like, no, I'm not paying that. And I was like, all right, no dramas. Well, you know, if you change your mind, you've got my card. Uh, also, have a nice day, my love. I'll see you later. And just walked off. The thing is, is for me, and and it's, it's slightly unfair for me to say these kinds of things. I think sometimes is that I'm at a different position than a lot of these, um, a lot of young people starting out. Um, I've gone through that process of rejection and worrying about having enough customers to pay the rent. So I've, I've, I, it's slightly unfair. I have been through that process. Um, but I did adopt that mindset of, well, if she says no, she says no. Um, worst case scenario, I'm not actually any worse off than I was five minutes ago. Um, it's just, all right, I've had a conversation. She said, no, all right, next, move on. And it's, and if you can be, um, and, it, and if, you can, if you can manage your emotions, um, you know what I mean? If you can manage your emotions, then ultimately you, you, you'll, you'll benefit. Um, I believe it's not so much a case of um, it's not so much a case of you know, oh, for God's sake, another rejection, Urgh. you know, and 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 it eats away at you. you know, water from ducks back, forget about it, move on. There'll be others. And the thing is, is that you know, if, if that customer clearly didn't value what we have to offer, um, so all right, well, I'm, I've done myself a favor by she's she's I've given her a price. She said no. She's done me a favor. Thanks very much. See you later. Walk off. So it's not a problem. Just be very polite, be very professional, walk on. Um, and I've had it many occasions where people have initially said, oh, I'm not paying that. And I was like, right, well, no, no dramas. You've got my card. Um, if you change your mind, feel free to give us a call. Um, that quote um, is, you know, that quote is, is relevant for the next 28 days. I'll, I'll honor that for the next 28 days. You know, and then they've contacted me further down the line because they've realized, well, actually, you know, getting a window cleaner is actually not as, not as straightforward or reliable window cleaner is not as straightforward as it seems. So, um, so yeah, the thing is, is you know, just water for ducks back. You will get better. You will get, you will go through these anxieties and you know, eventually you will get the confidence to sort of stand your ground and actually enjoy your business. I enjoy being self-employed. I enjoy the freedom. Um, but you can, I don't think you can enjoy the freedom until you've mastered um, controlling your anxiety, controlling your emotions. And, uh, you know, you, you, I, you, that needs to happen. You need to, you need to be able to sort of go, right, okay, bang, I need to, I need to address this. Um, and if you do that, you're onto a winner. Thanks for supporting that. I know it's been a long video, this one, but uh, I think it's, it's worth sort of um, investing time and in, in explaining things. Um, Thank, um, thanks for watching the video. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye now.